All right, well, good afternoon and happy holidays from my family and my family of employees here at Lipson RV. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Welcome to today's, welcome to today's uh, live monthly video webcast. Today, what we've assembled for today's topic is literally the top 10 technology questions that we get here at Lipson RV. Uh, today, we're sitting in a 2016 Winnebago Journey 36M. Uh, and we selected this model because it has a lot of those top 10 items that we've talked about. We've surveyed our service consultants in terms of what are the top 10 questions they get from our guests. We've also surveyed all of our sales consultants to find out what are all of our guests out in the field while they're out on the road? What are they asking us in terms of how can we actually add more value to your RVing experience? So today we're going to walk through those 10, those 10 uh, technology items that um, have been the uh, most common questions uh, answered here at Litson RV. As always, uh, if you look in the lower right hand corner of your screen off to the second tab, there's a chat box. And one of the things that we've had the most success with during these live monthly webcasts is the ability to communicate with you as you're watching. And so if you chat in your question, uh, Josh Dam, our special events and marketing director behind the camera, uh, is going to stop and we'll cover those questions live uh, so that we're respectful of your time so that if there's a certain component that you want to ask a question on, absolutely chat it in and we'll cover it. That's what's made these webcasts so successful and uh, so responsive for you, our guest. Um, also, just a couple of other housekeeping items. Um, keep in mind that this type of a live uh, setup we can do in the comfort of your own home or office at any point in time on any of our in-stock RVs. Uh, we've had wonderful feedback from our guests in which they can literally do a live interactive presentation with any of our factory trained consultants in the comfort of your own home or office. The great thing about it is that we can conference in a, a partner, a spouse from anywhere in the world and engage in a great three-way conference in which we can cover all of the questions that are important to you. We can cover nooks, crannies, um, how to do certain things, certain cabinet dimensions, whatever you need from the comfort of your home or office and it's just like us servicing you as your local dealer from anywhere in the world. So again, keep in mind we can do that at any point in time. Josh, how do I do on housekeeping items? Sounds good. Okay, sounds great. So again, chatting your questions. You don't have to chat in a question that's related to the top 10 technology items that we're covering. I'm fair game for anything. I've got a great bullseye on my back and we can cover whatever questions that you all would like. So let's get started. So one of the, um, we're gonna kind of go in a flow here within the uh, Journey 36M so that we can um, just make uh, the most efficient use of your time. So one of the, one of the greatest questions that we get uh, because we do help a lot of first timers uh, from uh, the RV audience is how do I get internet on the road? In today's society, we're so well connected uh, with electronic mail, within social media, uh, within any type of an answer that you need. How do I get internet on the, on the road? And so if you have a tablet uh, that's Wi-Fi connected, obviously you've got 4G built right into it. Um, you've obviously got your smartphone. But if you're util utilizing a traditional laptop or if you have a tablet that does not have uh, internet built into it. The most cost-effective solution in terms of getting internet on the road is one of two things. Uh, and when I say cost-effective, I mean because it's very affordable up front, but it's also affordable on a monthly basis. There are rooftop satellite uh, Wi-Fi devices that can be utilized. Um, they're extremely powerful. They're quite heavy, so there's limited applications in which we can install them, but they're also fairly expensive. And so we don't do a lot of those uh, in today's um, RVing experiences. Most of the time people opt for one of two sources of technology. They'll either take their existing smartphone and tether it to create a mobile hotspot. Or secondly, and what we do here at Litson RV with all of our trained consultants when, when we're on the road or when we're at certain rallies uh, or shows is we use something like this. And this is a mobile hotspot. Uh, this is called a Verizon Jetpack. Uh, we're in Verizon country here uh, within Iowa and it probably is the widest spread coverage for 4G LTE in the country. And that's no endorsement for Verizon, but we do get a lot of complaints from people that are on the road uh, for guests that utilize um, AT&T. And in some of the rural areas in which a lot of RVers are going, um, we also have a lot of complaints that AT&T doesn't reach quite as far. And again, that's no shot to AT&T, it's just the um, surveys that we've received from guest experience and based on our experience being out on the road. Verizon does tend to have the, the best rural coverage of 4G LTE. So again, you can buy one of these. Um, this is actually probably about two years old, but it's a Verizon Jetpack. Um, it creates a mobile hotspot. 
Um, the initial upfront investment, um, depending on your contract, can be either free or if you don't purchase uh, under contract, I think they're anywhere from $49 to $99. And then you only pay $10 a month to connect this under current Verizon plans. So what this does is it allows you to pair the data that you have on your current plan and then you can utilize it for up to, uh, depending on the type of device you have, either five or 10 different devices. So you can create your own Wi-Fi network on the road with a hotspot. Works really, really well. We utilize it um, when we go out to shows, when we go to Grand National Rally, uh, when we're out for professional development, but it allows all of us to bring in our Surface Pro tablets um, directly from anywhere in the world and it works really, really well. It's a very cost-effective solution. Again, most of these run around $50 and about $10 a month. So that's a, a real cost-effective way to get internet out on the road to maximize your RVing experience. So another um, piece of technology, I'm gonna shift gears to number two here. Um, one, of the, one of the obstacles that we have uh, in RVs right now is Winnebago is doing a really effective job of tucking away all of their appliances behind cabinet doors. Now the LED TVs are so thin, they're so light, we can utilize those as uh, cabinet doors. And so we tuck away a lot of our satellite technology, we tuck away a lot of our Blu-ray DVD players, and we tuck those away in different cabinetry. Um, most people when they RV, and we see a lot of this with our smaller views, Navions, uh, Vias, and Rayos, when we install a satellite system, uh, Winnebago has located the location for the satellite receiver uh, behind a cabinet door very residential setup, you probably have this in your home. And then what we do is we actually run HDMI cabling back to the rear television. So you can utilize that satellite technology um, up front in your main living area or actually in the rear on your rear bedroom TV. So the challenge then becomes, I don't wanna get up in the middle of the night or I don't wanna get up when I change channels and I wanna be able to change channels or flip between Blu-ray, flip between satellite, etc. when I'm actually in the rear bedroom or if I'm up front. So the best workaround that we found is something called an RF remote. And this is a Logitech Harmony remote. And I utilize this in my home, I utilize it in my office. And this is the most uh, predominant installation that we do when it comes to overcoming that objection to be able to change channels on your satellite receiver in your bedroom or anywhere in your coach, perhaps outside on your patio. This is an RF enabled remote. And the way that it works is we set it up so that it sits right in front of your satellite receiver, which can be tucked away, and it's macro enabled. So if I go and set it up to do certain things, I can watch TV. I have something called working. What this allows me to do is keep the TV on in my office while I listen to Spotify. Uh, the last setting down below here allows me to listen to radio yet have my television on. So this is a real cost effective solution for overcoming that objection of being able to change channels on your satellite receiver uh, when you don't have a direct point of aim. Because there's basically two different types of uh, remote controls that are out there. The first is an infrared, which we've known to come in love over the years. You point it at the device, it picks up that beam. That's an infrared. This is a radio frequency, so it can be, pick, be picked up anywhere outside or inside the coach. A couple questions. Awesome. Um, would like to hear about the options that have worked well for customers for um, alarm systems and campers. Okay, so um, with respect to security systems, there's um, kind of a good, better, best so to speak. Um, we don't do a lot of security systems um, here at Litson RV. Typically our guests are going to uh, fairly nice campgrounds, resorts, that type of thing. But in terms of security systems, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Probably the most affordable solution is to do something on your own in terms of alerts that you want. So if there's somebody on the perimeter of your RV, or if you very simply just want a second camera set up somewhere, um, I'm a real big fan of a website called smarthome.com and if you go to smarthome.com they have a lot of different um, do-it-yourself security systems that you can install whether they're motion activated, individual, um, individual alerts that basically just sense movement um, or you can have cameras set up. Um, then there's kind of a middle portion where you can take it somewhere and have certain alerts that come up for glass breakage, motion or again 
um, security cameras. Kind of the most elite option is you can actually set up a security system so long as you have that mobile hotspot that I referred to earlier. You can actually have uh, camera access and alerts come to your smartphone. Uh, we actually have that set up here in our dealership. So on my smartphone, I can see what's going on anywhere within the dealership. And then you can take it one step further and have motion or glass breakage alerts come directly to your smartphone. And we have had a couple requests to turn the TV off behind us if we can, if All we're right. not going to get to that right away. No problem. Let's do it. So we're going to utilize that here in a little bit, but I will turn that off for now especially depending upon whether or not you like that type of a movie. So again, any other questions, Josh? How are we doing? Uh, we're good for right now. Okay. So again, be sure to chat in your request uh, for any type of information because I'll cover w whatever you all want to cover. Uh, but for today, what we're going to cover is those top 10 technology items. Uh, we covered uh, internet on the road. We also covered RF remotes. Uh, we do a lot of these RF remotes here in our dealership because uh, we help guests with hundreds of Winnebago views and Itasca Navions every year. And what it allows us to do is provide that same type of a residential setup in the comfort of your RV, wherever you RV. So again, those are RF remotes. But again, if there's anything you all want to cover, be sure to chat in your question. Okay, so we're going to actually jump up front and we're going to stay stationary for a little bit. Uh, but we're going to go up front and we're going to cover the Rand McNally RV GPS setup. And I'm going to bring this along, Josh, because I think you might want it. So you can grab that there. Okay, so the reason why we opted to jump into a Winnebago Journey 36M is because this now has the 10.4 inch touchscreen that you can see here. It also has a second monitor. Now, if you have a Winnebago View and Itasca Navion, uh, if you have a Winnebago Via um, and Itasca Rayo, and it has this infotainment style setup on it, the display is the same. However, this just provided us a larger version um, of the Rand McNally setup uh, within the Winnebago Journey. So this 10.4 inch version is uh, actually available on the Winnebago Journey, Itasca Meridian on up in terms of the diesel pushers. It's also now available in the Winnebago Adventurer and Itasca Sun Cruiser. It also then comes with a second monitor up top. And the great thing about this is it's completely customizable. So if I decide that I'm traveling down the road and I want the second monitor up top to include something different, if I come into my aux zone, within this screen, I can tailor whatever I want to be on that second monitor. So what a lot of people will end up doing, if they like their co-pilot to handle the GPS, they might set it up that way. Or what I personally like to do is leave it back to the way I had it set up originally. So this is my rear view camera monitoring system dedicated as I travel down the road with the second monitor. All right, we do have a couple questions real quick. Cool. Uh, is there a coax wire to a rear TV in the Winnebago view? Uh, so there is, um, the best way to handle that is in, in a lot of the things that we do in the Winnebago views and Itasca Navions is what we'll do is we'll set up um, HDMI cabling. So we'll actually run HDMI cabling from that satellite receiver to that rear bedroom TV so that if we install a satellite for you or if you use a resort style cable uh, for your satellite, um, it allows you then to bring that satellite receiver technology that you have up front back into your rear bedroom. So we'll run HDMI cabling from that main location, which is generally uh, right inside the entry door, right behind that LED TV that acts as a cabinet door. Then we'll run an HDMI cable to the back. So you can actually run uh, your satellite or DVD back to that rear bedroom then that's when you'd want to take advantage of that RF remote that I was referring to earlier so that you don't have to get up, open up that cabinet, and point at your satellite receiver. RF remote's a great way to go. All right, and then also a question, if there's any other options available in a Winnebago era uh, rather than the Rand McNally infotainment system? Something, um, with, something with good sound they asked about. So you can always upgrade speakers. It's probably the most cost-effective solution rather than trying to customize it with Winnebago Industries. Um, there are some, some great um, car audio locations throughout the United States. 
um, some that I kind of favor based on the market that you're living in. The most cost effective solution is to do it after market as opposed to trying to have Winnebago Industries do it, um, whether it be at that point of production. We can also do it right in house as well. Keep in mind that most of the incremental value that you'll get out of better audio is gonna come through the speakers. So it's not necessarily a matter of replacing the head unit within the infotainment center, but really providing for a, a better speaker experience. Great, that's it for right now. Okay, so we're back to the Rand McNally setup again. This is just a 10.4 inch uh, screen that comes in the Winnebago Journey on up and the Winnebago Adventure and Itasca Sun Cruiser. We're using this one because it'll show up a little bit better uh, in our webcast. And keep in mind, some of the things that we talk about right now, um, we're actually gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna do some snips of, snippets of these and we'll house them in our video library. So if I don't cover your questions precisely, we'll have this webcast archived. We'll also do some snippets of it. So what we're attempting to do here within the uh, infotainment center is just allow to tailor, what do I want to play on this second monitor? Uh, the second monitor also now is touch screen as well, just like the lower screen is. Um, I tend to favor having the rear view camera set up on the smaller one and the Rand McNally GPS here. The second setting that you see over here um, won't apply to uh, the Winnebago Views, Itasca Navions, Eras, um, Cambrias, Aspects, that type of product because what this is geared towards is now being able to play certain things that are on your infotainment center into all of your high definition televisions, which I'm going to demonstrate here in a little bit. So what this allows you to do is run your Sirius XM satellite radio through any of your televisions. So if I go to Sirius XM, I can actually have that run through. Otherwise, if I just leave it on Rand McNally, now if you look up Josh, now I have that Rand McNally set up on my overhead TV and I can also funnel it to any of the other ones. So again, this is just whatever your whatever you want to play on your house mode, which again only applies where you have a matrix selection system for your entertainment center for your televisions, which we'll cover here in a moment. Okay, so again, I got there from going to the main menu, and this is your aux zone, and this is house mode. So again, house mode only applies. I'm gonna turn down the volume here. House mode only applies to those setups that actually have a matrix selection system for each of the televisions. Again, that's house mode. That allows you to funnel. Now, Josh, if you look up, now we're actually listening to the radio through any of the televisions throughout the coach. This particular uh, floor plan happens to have an overhead television right above the cockpit. But again, you could funnel that to your outside patio, to your main living TV, or to your bedroom TV. Okay, so one of, do you have a question? Yeah, there's a couple questions here. Okay. Let me just grab this. Um, the person that was commenting on the coax and the Winnebago view said they have a dual dish receiver and need a coax to the second TV so the dish will operate both TVs. Um, that's why they have the coax. Okay, so if the coax question is to pull in, um, what we would want to do if, if we're trying to run a dual tuner TV in terms of we're trying to split the signals. So if we want a television in the front of your Winnebago view and you want a satellite technology in the rear bedroom, then what we would want to do is utilize the coaxial that's back there because there is coaxial that's back there and then utilize that and split the L and B from the roof. So we actually have one coaxial cable going to your front living area and one coaxial cable going to your rear bedroom. That allows you to watch two different stations at the same time. Now, alternatively, what we could do is actually run it off of um, one split receiver and have a DVR technology set up as well by utilizing those two coaxial inputs. But again, either way, we can get uh, HDMI technology um, from the main satellite receiver up front to the rear bedroom. All right, and then a couple TV questions. Uh, sure. The first is, can you bring your own TVs to replace any lower quality TVs you might get in a motorhome? You can, absolutely. And that's all just based on size. Um, and so we do have um, some folks that actually want to um, increase the high definition capability uh, in their television to go from 1080 up to potentially 4K. Now remember, you have to have a device that will actually broadcast the 4K. 
if you want to take advantage of 4K technology. But it's just all based on space and, and what type of inputs that you want. Um, the most cost effective solution is to grab um, some type of a television, LED television, LCD television from you know a, an aftermarket company and then just either have us install it or install it yourself based on the size constraints of where that old TV is. All right, then we have a guest asking uh, if there's an option to get an RV without TVs and antenna installed. They don't have one at home and don't want want one on the road. Absolutely. I mean, we can customize it to delete the TVs and anything. And then finally, uh, are there any Wi-Fi booster antenna that work well inside the RV to grab the RV park's internet? Uh, yes. I mean, you can actually do um, an... Uh, a Wi-Fi extender to increase that. Now, if there's, there's really two different things within that question. So if you want to increase the strength of your own 4G, whether it be for your cellular phone or for a hotspot, we can actually install um, a Wi-Fi booster um, actually outside the coach to where the sensor is actually inside, and it'll increase your 4G uh, LTE inside the coach. And so that's a booster. So that's bringing in from Verizon or Sprint or AT&T. Um, we can do that. We've had good success with the Nighthawk uh, Night Ranger, and you can find those on Amazon. We've installed several of those um, uh, here at our dealership for people that are utilizing these as home offices. Um, we can also then actually hook up what is called a Wi-Fi extender, which will basically provide a stronger reception of that Wi-Fi from your resort or campground, and then broadcast a stronger signal directly here within your RV. That's it for now. All right, cool. So let's go into uh, the navigational setup for, for just a few seconds. Now, again, remember the Rand McNally setup is available on Winnebago View, Itasca Navion, Winnebago Via, Itasca Rail, Winnebago Aspect, Cambria. Um, Winnebago era uh, touring coach um, and then obviously um, in this coach this is this is the journey on up for all the diesel pushers and in the adventure and Sun Cruiser so one of the most critical benefits of the Rand McNally RV GPS setup is the fact that it is specific for RVs and when you go into the main menu of the Rand McNally setup the first thing that you want to do, and we do this for all of our guests as part of our educational orientations, which are the half-day classes that we offer here in our dealership uh, when you take delivery of your new RV. And so we'll set this up for you, uh, but to show you how to utilize it if your dealer or if you just need a refresher on how to do it, one of the most critical things that you first want to do when you go into the main menu is go into RV Tools and then go into RV Info and you literally want to put in your weights and measures. Now the reason why that's important is because one of the benefits to this RV GPS setup is Rand McNally will never take you down a road that you don't have adequate gross vehicle weight rating for. It'll also take you down no roads that you don't have adequate overhead clearance for and it'll also specifically find RV friendly filling stations, campgrounds, and that type of thing. But the safety component of the Rand McNally system is fantastic. So again, I'm just gonna go back out to show you that one more time. And again, we'll snip this into a how-to video, but off the main menu, go into RV Tools, go into RV Info, and then just toggle down and input your weights and measures. So for example, um, total length, I don't have a dinghy uh, tow vehicle set up to this 36M. This 36M is 37 and change, so I wanna set the length. If I go down to the next page, I can set the gross vehicle weight rating of the vehicle, the height, and also the width. It's a real critical thing because you can't achieve the benefit of the Rand McNally setup without going in and programming your weights and measures. So again, that's the first thing that you want to do. Program in your weights and measures by going into RV Info. So another neat feature on um, the new Rand McNally setups is and this is also where you would map out your destination. You can do it with voice activated um, calling, voice activated directions, that type of thing. But if you go into preferences, this is where you can fine tune screensaver. You can screen, uh, fine tune your um, wallpaper. Uh, you can fine tune um, a lot of different types of things in terms of brightness, brightness, automatic mode where it's day night, that type of thing. But a neat new setup now um, within the Rand McNally setups is to go into Wi-Fi. So there is Wi-Fi built into the Rand McNally that will pull off of your hotspot. 
So if I refresh and search for Wi-Fi, if I'm using that Verizon 4G hotspot that I talked about earlier, it'll show up on here and now I can connect to Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to our free Wi-Fi that we have here at the dealership. It's going to remind you that it can pull data. And so now I'm connected to our Wi-Fi. Now the benefit to connecting to the Wi-Fi is you can actually get weather alerts, travel alerts in terms of traffic, in terms of accidents. You can also then program this to set up so that when you're actually looking for fuel stations, it will pull and actually provide you those that have the lowest fuel prices. It'll show up on a map that will actually show you the fuel price of that particular station. But again, that's only if you're connected to Wi-Fi. Now, while we're talking about that, probably the next intuitive question becomes, can I update my maps with Rand McNally RV GPS? And currently, the only way to update your maps is through the secure digital card. So right now you can't utilize it for that, but I'm gonna talk about updating your maps here in a moment. All right, a couple questions. You bet. Um, one is related to a coach house that a guest had purchased from us, and I think we'll uh, give you a call after the webcast okay. to uh, discuss that. Um, and then somebody also is asking, uh, they have a Travato, uh, saying the built-in navigation will route you to some low clearances. Are there any dashboard units that can handle the weights and measures and know about um, how to handle your specific RV? So yeah, there are uh, actually other GPS setups, whether they become uh, Garmin or other setups that you can program in your weights and measures specific to that. And so that would be an aftermarket style GPS setup. Um, in the Winnebago Touring Coach Travado, that's actually a TomTom -Tom GPS system that comes from Ram ProMaster. So um, that's a different setup, but if you're talking about a third party accessory such as a Garmin or that type of thing, you can still program in the weights and measures as well. The nice thing about this is Winnebago has it built in right with the Ram McNally RV GPS. And then asking if our guests keep the mattress that comes stock or do they replace? Uh, is it hard to find a replacement? Uh, mattresses? No, good question. We get that question a lot. Um, most people, if they swap out their mattress, they'll retain the old one uh, because it's good to have when you go to trade your vehicle in. Um, but a lot of people will swap out their mattresses for whatever's comfortable for them at home. You just probably want to store the other one so that you've got a good exit strategy upon resale. And then does the safety feature work only when a destination is entered or whenever the system is on and you're going down the road? Uh, whenever the system is on and you'll get an alert and you won't miss the alert. All right. That's it for right now. All right. Cool. So, um... Another nice feature, a lot of people sometimes like to just disable the navigational if they know where they're going, but they still want the traffic and alerts. L real quick menu here, you can actually just mute it right here at this location. If you want to just turn it off, otherwise you control it with the normal volume. So again, within preferences, um, again, just different types of behind the scenes, behind the scenes type of things that you can do, such as wallpapers, brightness, that type of thing, and then also connecting the Wi-Fi. There's also some preferences that you can do with respect to route mapping. Uh, we've see that we see this in all types of GPS systems. If you want to allow freeways, um, avoid tollways, avoid U-turns, that type of thing, and then also some nice preferences here within the map so that you can turn um, points of interest icons on or off, RV points of interest icons on or off, um, and also just bookmark certain things that are in your address book. So again, that little uh, curved arrow brings you back, and now we're back to the main menu. So with respect to RV tools, that's where you program in your weights and measures. The nice thing about Rand McNally is you can also put in some wonderful checklists, um, maintenance schedules, um, different trails that you've favored, uh, and then also you can actually maintain uh, different types of um, fuel measures. You get some nice fuel prices, and again, if you connect it to Wi-Fi, you can actually get those alerted. So some nice setups here within the Rand McNally setup. Um, we'll cover some other how-tos on different snippets that we'll actually archive inside of our video library. So another common question that we get is how do I pair up my smartphone? So one of the nice things about these units now is with the Rand McNally setup and a lot of these, you can actually pair up your smartphone or tablet to not only make hands-free calling available, but also to pair up to listen to all of your downloaded music or audio apps, uh, such as Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, um, whatever you'd like. And you can do that Bluetooth directly through your smartphone or tablet. 
So what I'm gonna show you how to do now is how to pair up your smartphone with a Rand McNally setup. And again, we'll archive this, but if you've got some questions on it, um, let us know and we'll cover those right now. So what I wanna do is um, make certain that I have Bluetooth enabled on my smartphone, and this is actually an Android, so um, yours may be slightly different. But we're gonna go into the main menu for the actual infotainment center. Now this is not part of Ram McNally, this is in the main infotainment center. We're gonna to go to the menu, excuse me, sorry about that. We're gonna to go to the menu and then we're gonna go into settings, which is the little cog, and I've got fat fingers. We're gonna go into setup. And we're gonna go into, oh, I gotta turn Bluetooth on first. We'll turn Bluetooth on first and it'll automatically bring you into the ability to pair a phone. So right now there are no phones connected. We're gonna go ahead and set one up. There are no pair devices. So if you had multiple devices set up, they would show in here. We're gonna click on new. And we'll go ahead and get it paired now with my smartphone. So this is gonna show up as the XSG3, and that's actually just the model number for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, and I'm gonna pair this up with my infotainment center. And I got timed out. And so now I'm actually paired. So you can see it's reading my phone here. I'm gonna allow it to access my contacts. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna show you another neat feature here. So now I'm in the Bluetooth hands-free calling setup of the infotainment center. You can see it's already detected my carrier, Verizon Wireless, it's detected my battery, and it's showing my signal strength. What I wanna do now is I wanna go down here to my business card, and if I import that, now it's downloading all of my contacts directly into the Bluetooth setup. And this will take a while because I have quite a few contacts in here. But the reason why you want to do that is so that if you receive an inbound call and perhaps your smartphone is back in a duffel bag, a briefcase, or it's out of, out of hand, you can actually see who's calling. But you can also send and receive calls through the Bluetooth hands-free connection here by scrolling through your contacts, set up presets, set up favorites, and that type of thing. So if it's a, it's a wonderful way to keep your eyes on the phone, on the road, but rather than um, having to worry about picking up your smartphone or tablet, you can actually see who's calling so long as you import your phone book. You can do this with multiple devices, but remember when we first went back in and we showed that they had different directory listings? If you have two or three devices set up, sometimes it likes to fight for different ones, so you wanna make certain that you select the first one that you actually wanna utilize. All right, tons of questions. All right, let's do it. Um, can a 2008 Navion be upgraded with the navigation? If so, rough estimate on cost. Uh, it can. Uh, it's probably not the most cost-effective solution um, for a vehicle um, in that setup because we would actually have to run the GPS setup. Uh, we would actually have to um, replace the head unit. Um, you know, real rough estimation. I mean, you're probably looking at $1,500 alone just for the parts and, and probably a good three to five hours of labor. So it's probably not the most cost effective solution. If you're very simply just looking for GPS, uh, probably the best way is an aftermarket Garmin. I'm a big fan of the Nuvi because they have lifetime updates at no charge. Um, question if there's anywhere on the internet to uh, recommend RV trips to take different routes there, for example, going from the Bay Area to Florida. Um, actually, Rand McNally does. Um, there are uh, some setups directly on the Rand McNally site, um, but if you check out different forums and that type of thing, there's all kinds of different links out there. Not one specific comes to mind other than using Rand McNally. Can multiple smartphones be paired at one time? Um, only at one time to be utilizing audio on one Bluetooth and then actually phone on the other. So you couldn't have two phones set up, making obviously making the same call at the same time. You can actually pair them up, but not actually have them active. Um, 
question as to rumors when or if Winnebago is going to upgrade the View Navion system anytime soon. Uh, the infotainment center is not going to change. You've probably seen a lot of chatter about the new JBL system, uh, which is are, are some upgraded speakers with inside the cockpit of the RV. I know there's been a lot of chatter on some of the forums about that. Uh, the one thing I can tell you is that is going to be a delayed startup. It's not going to be available right out of the chute. Uh, is there a way to connect two cables from a dish to the matrix system on the 36M? Uh, can you repeat that? Um, is there a way to connect two cables from a dish to the matrix system on a 36M? Yeah, so let me, um, so the, the again, the question was hooking up two different cables to the matrix system. Um, probably what we're trying to obtain there is the ability to split the satellite uh, signal. So the best way to do that is, and I'm going to show you here in a little bit, um, there are two different shelves uh, within the matrix setup so that you can actually install two different satellite receivers. And then you can actually pipe that satellite receiver to your patio, to the front, uh, to the rear bedroom, really wherever you want. Um, we always run um, two coaxial off the L and B so that you can do that. You can actually also do a DVR setup for that way if you're just using one satellite receiver. But there's absolutely a way you can do that and I'll show you here in a little bit. All right, we're good. All right, so, so what we've done is we've paired up um, our smartphone now. You can actually see it's identifying my Samsung that I have, which is an Android device. If I go into my business cards, um, I can scroll through and see all of my contacts now. So these are all the different contacts. I very simply just select one. So if I just randomly grab anyone here, and then click on that, it'll go ahead and dial it. Uh, you can also search. You can actually just type in the number to go back. You can also just manually make a call. And then as soon as I do it and make that call, you can see it's actually dialing from my phone and it's ringing out now. So this is the hands-free style setup. Good afternoon, what's an RV? Hi Stacy, it's Ron. How are you? And she hung up on me. So that's just an opportunity to be able to make hands-free calls from literally anywhere. And Stacy knew that I wanted to bring her onto our live webcast and she got a little stage fright. So again, you can just dial the number or you can pick your contact. But the only way you're gonna be able to do that is if you import your phone book. How are we doing on questions? Um, question here, I guess. I heard that when you buy an RV, you can hire a specialist to go over and test everything and make sure all of it's well. Uh, you certainly can. Um, we actually do that for all of our deliveries here at Litson RV. Um, so if you're purchasing a pre-owned RV, many of our RVs are certified pre-owned RVs where we'll go through literally a 172 point inspection to test all of the systems. Um, we're also uh, required by Winnebago Industries. We actually go over and above and use that same 172 point inspection on all of our new RV deliveries. Um, if you're purchasing something and you want somebody to come in and actually do an inspection for you, we've had that happen probably only once or twice in the 15 years that I've owned this business. So it's not very common, but it's absolutely positive, possible. Good? Yep. Okay. so. Again, we're back to the main screen on the setup here. Again, the aux zone down below dictates what goes under your secondary monitor or what goes into your auxiliary zone, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment because this does have the matrix setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on um, that house mode and pipe that signal up top. So again, we were just on the Bluetooth setup. So again, any of the things from your um, infotainment center uh, can be run uh, directly into your house mode. And so some unique things that you can do with that, and Josh, we're gonna go ahead and segue into the matrix now, if that's okay with you. So the reason why I'm showing this right now is because um, I just happened to take that Ram McNally setup and actually move it um, to the other TVs. This is what people are referring to when, we're, when we refer to the matrix setup. Can people see that okay, Josh? Yeah. So really the matrix setup that you see here with that light bulb. 
that help or hurt? I think that helps a little bit. Okay, so this is the matrix selection from Winnebago Industries, okay? And this is really kind of a fancy name for very simply an HDMI video selection system. So just like in our older RVs, we used to have a coaxial video selection system. This is now HDMI. And the reason why we're using HDMI is because we want to be able to preserve this Blu-ray signal or we want to preserve the high definition coming off of what we have right now for Dish Network. So I'm going to turn that other TV on, Josh. Quick question while we're getting this going. Um, any information on the inverter that comes with the 300 watt solar panel package for the new view? Uh, is it 1K watt or 2K? Um, all of the inverters uh, within the Winnebago View and Itasca Navion uh, will not change regardless of which solar option you select. So if you select no solar um, or if you do select the solar option, whether it be um, 100, 300, or if you go all the way up to the full 450 that's on the solar controller charger, um, the inverter does not change. So they're all 1,000 watt inverters and those are all now standard in the Winnebago View and Itasca Navion. So this is the matrix selection system and what it allows you to do is to any of your TVs funnel your Blu-ray which is option number one. So if I change this to one, change all these to one. So right now the Blu-ray player uh, which is actually showing a movie that you saw earlier. I'm going to go ahead and turn this TV off. So right now it's actually utilizing the Blu-ray to go to any of those four TVs. So this coach actually does have four TVs in it. It has a main living television. It has the overhead television that you saw earlier, a bedroom television, and then also the patio. So within your matrix selection system, option number one is your Blu-ray. So if I have all of my TVs and right now the bedroom TV is not on, which is why it's red, I have all of these set to option number one, which is a Blu-ray player. Option number two would be your first satellite receiver. You can add a second satellite receiver, which one of the previous guests were chatting about and asking a question about. So you can have two different satellite receivers on here, uh, split the signal and go to two different locations. So you can be watching different stations outside versus inside or your bedroom versus your main living area. Um, right now we have this set up as option number three. So if we flip that over to option number three for the satellite receiver, for all of these, it's going to flip over to the satellite. And it's just a little screensaver there, Josh. So Josh, if you swivel back around now, now we're actually watching satellite on our main living TV. Again, pure high definition. We've maintained that high definition signal whether it be Blu-ray or high definition out of your satellite receiver. Um, this just happens to be showing the main menu setup because we're inside our studio and don't have a satellite um, actually uh, receiving any broadcasting right now. But the other nice thing about it is that you can flip over now to the fourth that Winnebago is now offering. So if you go over to option number four, And then that will actually bring the Ram McNally setup like you saw overhead. So that's just a little bit about that matrix selection system. Again, the concept there uh, is that it allows you to bring the high definition satellite, the infotainment center, or the Blu-ray player to any of your televisions. The other great benefit to pairing up that Rand McNally setup in that infotainment center to actually run through your matrix system is now you can actually run Sirius XM satellite radio to any of your televisions. So even though the Sirius subscription is actually in that front head unit within the front radio, now you can listen to Sirius XM satellite receivers out on your patio, in your bedroom, or anywhere within the coach. 
The other feature to that that's real handy is the fact that you can now utilize it as, as one of the earlier guests was referring to, a security system. So if you hear something outside, you can actually just go to your uh, Ram McNally setup, your infotainment center, and pull up that camera for outside or any of the two side video cameras. The other thing about the Ram McNally setup is that it'll run through the matrix now in house mode. And again, we can seal all of that behind a cabinet door and we have an infrared remote from any of those locations to change your inputs. All right, a couple of questions. Uh, first one is, when you buy an RV from us, do we allow the people to stay on the lot to learn about the motorhome? Yeah, so um, if you go to um, either Google or Facebook and look at any of our reviews, uh, where people provide some independent assessments on our dealership, um, one of the things that they'll really rave about is the fact that we do a half day class with our guest. Uh, one of our factory trained RVI certified technicians will take you through the entire RV. We'll cover every switch, we'll cover every feature, we'll show you what to do, we'll show you what not to do. We'll cover maintenance, we'll cover warranty, and then right here at our facility within our campground and our resort, we encourage people to spend a couple of nights with us because we do have a fairly scripted delivery process based on how much volume we actually do and how many guests we see each year. And so what most guests will do is they'll spend a night or two with us. We have a nice memo pad laid out for them. I only live a mile down the road, so I'm always accessibly, um, accessible and available. But it allows people to just jot, a, jot down a question. We wake up the next day, we reconvene, we get all your questions answered. A lot of people will then also take in an award-winning factory tour from Winnebago. And then um, can the maps and Rand McNally be updated? Yep, good question. And that was right where I was headed next. So the maps within Rand McNally, and um, in this particular coach, Josh, if you just look all the way down below, right here, this is a secure digital card reader right here. And very simply, if you push that in and release it, your maps are all housed on this secure digital card. You take this secure digital card, you plug it into your computer, it will self-install the software to update your maps. And right now, so far, I've never had a guest ever charged to update their maps. So you can get free map updates based on what we've been told and, and guests that have done it here in our store. We also update these here in our store for our guests and we do it for them at no charge. So it's a great service that we also offer. Plug it back in and you're good to go. And then we'll reload it. Good question. How are we doing? Uh, we're good. Okay. So another question that's come up quite a bit is, can I plug my computer into my television? Maybe I have a laptop or a tablet. Um, for example, my father uh, lives down in Florida and he loves the NFL Sunday ticket. And so what he does is he takes his iPad and purchases a cable that goes from his iPad to his television and he can watch the NFL Sunday ticket. Of course, it's on my app and I'm the one paying for it, but he has the opportunity to watch the NFL Sunday ticket directly on any television. And it's just a cord that you plug into your television. So you can do that anywhere. If you wanted to get real elaborate to it, you could also run it directly into the matrix system and just extend the cable. So you could literally be watching your tablet, your computer, uh, your iPad to any of those televisions just by installing the cable inside that matrix system. Okay, we're gonna move on to a couple other items. So this is the King Control fixed mass local off-air antenna. And we get a lot of questions on how to actually fine tune my antenna. We also get a lot of questions from different guests that say, why, don't I, why do I not have any power to it? So you can see the power hopefully just cut off. So the one thing to remember about any type of an RV is that you always have a local off air booster switch. Okay, and for this coach, it happens to be up front. That local off air booster switch is what amplifies your local programming, your local high definition programming. But in terms of the King Control fixed mast antenna, that's also what provides you your power. So if you have this in the on position, but you don't have any power to it, you just have to turn on your local off air booster. So this has a couple of different features to it. 
Um, this is the fine tuning knob right here, and this is what's called an attenuator. And what an attenuator does is it provides ultra fine tuning to bring in your entire lineup from inside the coach. Remember, this is a fixed mast antenna. So you no longer have to worry about cranking it up, but more importantly, forgetting to crank it back down. So to utilize this, you bring your attenuator all the way off, swivel this around to where you get your best signal. Now again, remember we're in a steel building, so we're not gonna get a great signal. So even if I get one bar here with my LCD meter, I get one bar, then I fine tune my attenuator to bring that one LCD blue light all the way to four. And again, kind of a bad example because we're inside a steel building, but utilize this first and then your attenuator and you'll get a full lineup of local off-air free high definition programming from inside your coach. All right, so that's your King Control antenna. So let's move over to Winnebago's one place panel. And when we refer to a one place panel, it basically refers to the fact that all of your gauges are in one easy to read location. Um, and in this particular RV, we actually have it housed behind a cabinet door. So it hides everything. I just extended it out so that we got a little bit better lighting. And I'm just double checking chats here to make sure that we've covered everything. Hopefully we covered um, the guest question here about uh, allowing a person to stay in our lot to know how to connect things. Uh, if you have other questions on guest experience uh, or any other questions, we've had a lot of questions on views and avions, just go ahead and fire those away and we'll cover them as we go. Okay, so this is a one place panel for a Winnebago Journey 36M. It looks very similar to an adventurer. You're gonna have several of these same components in your RV regardless of what type of an RV you actually have. Uh, working our way top down, I'm just gonna cover a couple of things um, specifically. This is the engine heater for the diesel powertrain. Um, this is a zoned thermostat, okay? And in a lot of our larger coaches now, we actually have zones uh, rather than having individual um, thermostats for each of the air conditioning. So in this particular coach, um, this has two different zones. And in the 36M, the front zone is the living area and the kitchen. And zone two uh, is the bath and bedroom. So before we jump into this thermostat question, I see we just had a chat come in that talks about a Travato charging options if you're not connected to shore power or don't want the generator running, which is a really good question because in the Travato now, if you check out some of our videos on the Travato 59G and the 59K, um, the engineers at Winnebago have done a wonderful job of including multiple 12 volt outlets as well as USB charging outlets. And in some of uh, like the 59K for example, there's a total of 12 different USB outlets that you can charge your devices from. There's also some dedicated 12 volt outlets. Again, those all pull off at 12 volts so you no longer have to have your generator running and uh, it just charges directly off of the RV batteries. So one of the questions we get within the zone thermostats is what are the zones and it depends on your floor plan but in this particular case zone one is the front living and kitchen uh, the rear bedroom and bath is zone two. The first thing you do is decide what you actually want your system to do so they kind of work in top down order. So if I go to system I can actually change this to a cool mode or to heat mode. Okay then I can select between zone one and zone two and once I'm within that zone, I can go into the mode and decide if I want it to run my heat pumps or if I want it to run my furnace. So right now I'm in zone one, I'm on heat, and if I go to mode, I can do electric or I can dedicate it to turn it off, but the first option is propane gas. Now if you have a Winnebago Tour or an Itasca Ellipse and you have an all electric coach, the gas side would be your aqua hot. So again, if I go into zone two, now I can decide how I want my heat set up to gas or electric. Real slick setup, zoned uh, heating is wonderful. Um, you'll see some individual black eyes throughout the coach. Those are actually the sensors. And you can see I just turned on the heat pumps um, and it demanded a call in the rear bedroom. So I'll go ahead and turn that off so that we don't have the background noise. 
So within the one-place panel, pretty straightforward. You've got your gas and electric water heater, your 12-volt water pump, true-level holding tank monitoring system. One of the things that uh, one of our guests wanted us to cover was the inverter. Now, this coach actually has a 2,800-watt pure sine wave inverter. And just to reiterate what an inverter does is it allows you to run 110-volt appliances, so household appliances, directly off of your RV batteries. This particular coach has a 2800 watt pure sine wave inverter, uh, mainly because in this coach, we actually have a residential refrigerator package. So this is a French door style refrigerator. It runs off of electricity or the six AGM absorbed glass batteries. Those absorbed glass ba matte batteries are completely maintenance free. So this inverter allows you to run those appliances directly off of your RV batteries. Now, a great feature to this 2800 watt pure sine wave inverter is standby mode. And what standby mode allows you to do is run this like an uninterruptible power supply. So if you're running a computer or if you're running the convection oven and you want to break down camp and go ahead and take off, as long as I leave this in uninterruptible power supply mode, if I bring my shoreline cord in, I never skip a beat and have continuous uninterruptible power supply for all of my 110 volt appliances. Uh, just a question about uh, if you can get behind TVs to utilize HDMI or USB ports. Uh, which type of TVs? I'm sorry. Uh, just TVs in general, it's asking. To utilize HDMI or USB ports. Oh, get ports. behind them. Yeah. yeah, absolutely you can. And um, in a lot of cases, we also have um, access ports behind the televisions that provide easy access. But yeah, we can actually then um, uh, add additional HDMI cabling for different inputs. So within this particular coach, right now we're plugged in. However, if we unplugged the coach, we would run everything in this coach with the exception of the washer dryer and the overhead air conditioners directly off of the RV batteries. And if I leave it in standby mode with this green light running, as soon as I unplug, I don't skip a beat. Uh, I don't lose TV reception. My satellite does not have to reconfigure. Uh, it runs as an uninterruptible power supply. So one of the advantages to this inverter is you can tie that in obviously to your residential refrigerator package. Um, this coach up top has a 100 watt solar system on it. So it will be um, charging the RV batteries anytime you have sunlight. Um, but we take it one step further in this and we actually include an automatic generator start setup. Uh, this is a Cummins Onan automatic generator start system. Uh, it's included on a lot of our RVs that have dual air conditioners or three air conditioners. But what it allows you to do are two primary benefits. Uh, the first benefit is that you can actually set it up for sensory power, which means that if you lose shoreline power to the coach, perhaps your campground or your resort loses power, you can have this set up so that it automatically kicks on your generator to keep pets and to keep less knowledgeable occupants to the coach cool. So it's a great safety feature. Uh, the second main benefit to it is that it will precisely read the battery, the voltage that you have in your batteries, and reserve enough residual battery power to charge your RV batteries. But then the nice thing about it is that once they're charged, it'll shut the generator down. So those are the two main benefits if you lose shoreline power or if your batteries get low. The nice thing about it is that I'm going to show you here how you can do it with no generator hours. So if you're in a campground or a resort that has dictated no generator hours, even if they lose shoreline power, uh, or if you're in a national park and there's no generator hours, you can set a schedule so that that generator will never kick on during no, no generator hours. So a lot of questions that we get on the automatic generator start system are, are pretty simple ones. Um, how do I set the clock? How do I set the no generator hours? And so, um, really the, the simplest way to think about this is you can run this generator in three different modes. You can set it in automatic mode, you can leave it in manual mode, which you saw earlier, or you can also set it in no generator hours mode. Okay, so if I go to set, I can set the clock. If I come back over, I can actually set it up so that if I want it to be in automatic mode, 
So right now it is in automatic mode, which means if my shoreline power gets low or if I lose resort cable, it will fire because that's the way I have it programmed. I can also set it so that it doesn't run during no generator hours or I can run it in manual mode. So one of the questions that we get is, you know, very simply, how do I set the clock? So you just hit the set button. After four seconds, it'll go to each one. So right now it's 257 local. If I want to set the clock, I push the set button. I pick the right hour. And then you'll notice after four seconds, it'll slide over to the next one. Then I can set that. If I wait, it'll slide back over to the final digit and I can adjust that and I can also get out at any point in time. Okay, so one of the questions we get is, um, how do I set it up for automatic mode? And so what I'm gonna show you now is the menu. So when you go into the menu of this automatic generator start system and just use the arrows, this will toggle through all of the different readouts that you have on the automatic generator start system. So this will tell me the life of the batteries, how charged they are. So the RV batteries are at 13.6. My engine battery right now is at 12.8. Um, I'm gonna need service for my generator in 50 hours. Right now this generator, because this is a factory fresh Journey 36M that we just received from the factory has a 10th of an hour on it. Uh, so we haven't even done the pre-delivery inspection on this coach yet. Lastly, if you go into setup and info, then once I'm in here, I can set up the generator itself. Those are some diagnostic things. If I go into auto, this is where I can determine certain voltages. And we generally recommend to people, it will start charging, just leave it set to automatic so it'll automatically sense when your batteries actually need to be charged. You can also then do the shutdown time for when it stops. But again, we generally just recommend an automatic sensory setup. And then this is the sensory setup so that if you lose shoreline power, right now I've got it set up so that if we lose shoreline power, it'll automatically fire the generator. I can also change that to off. So if you just wanted to charge your batteries but never kick on, if you lose power, you can set it up that way. Anytime you want to get out, just hit automatic gen. And then again, I can set it up for automatic mode. How are we doing on questions, Joshua? Uh, looks like there's one there. Okay. Uh, so one of the questions that came in is, do alarms go off to tell you if you need propane, batteries, gas, water are low? Um, in terms of what that guest just chatted in, there aren't necessarily alarms that go off, um, with the exception of your RV batteries if you have these types of components. And that'll actually tell you if your RV batteries are getting low, and it'll automatically fire the generator. But there aren't any propane alerts. Uh, we obviously have low fuel alerts, um, but not necessarily in terms of when you need water or propane. Okay, we're doing pretty well on questions. I've got one more trick to show people for people that have a Freightliner chassis. And most people don't know that this exists, but I really encourage people to check it out. So this is a Freightliner chassis, um, as all of our diesel pushers are right now from Winnebago Industries. And one thing that a lot of people don't know that this coach has, I'm just going to go ahead and turn the ignition key on so you'll get a little bit of a beep here in a second. So everyone has seen the pre-trip checklist that we have. Um, you see those because you see them on your joystick. Okay. However, once you're actually in your cluster and you're just normally operating it, and don't worry, that alert will go off here in a second. If you press and hold your joystick down here, Josh, right here. If you press and hold this to the right for three seconds and you come back over to your cluster, this allows you to gain access to some hidden features within the cluster that uh, Freightliner provides. So setup, maintenance, diagnostics, some nice features here in diagnostics and also 
maintenance, and you can set up your cluster. That's how you actually set your date and time, configure checklists, etc. So again, that's accessed by taking this joystick and holding it to the right for three seconds. That will actually enable that setup menu within the Freightliner cluster. All right, well, we've covered everything that I had on my agenda today. We're going to keep the um, chat lines open here for a few seconds. And if you have any last minute uh, questions that you want to chat in, go ahead and I'll cover those live right now. Otherwise, also keep in mind that we have live chat staffed right on our website. And during normal operating hours, those are real people from here at Litson RV. So they're factory trained sales consultants, they're factory trained managers, and uh, also factory trained parts staff uh, that we can cover all of your questions right live on our website during normal operating hours. Um, after hours, we actually do outsource it to another company, but they'll provide us all of that information so that we can get back to you right then the next day. Also keep in mind that we archive all of our live monthly video webcasts. So this webcast that we just did on the top 10 technology uh, how-tos uh, within utilizing your RV to get more value out of it will be archived on our website tomorrow. Also, uh, as soon as we're done, we're gonna do several different snippets of how-to videos. So if you needed a refresher on Bluetooth in your phone uh, or potentially setting up your weights and measures within Rand McNally, we'll do several of those how-to snippets and we'll house those also directly right inside our video library on Litson.com. If you look in different headers of that actual video library page, there are hundreds of videos in there that receive a lot of different YouTube views that provide a lot of different value for our guests. So um, be sure to check out that video library uh, directly right on our website. Also remember, in terms of the format for this live monthly video webcast, if you have a question on an in-stock RV, we can do that at any point in time in the comfort of your own home or office. Uh, with us being only a mile from Winnebago Industries right down the road, uh, we have a wonderful inventory of new RVs and any of our in-stock pre-owned RVs, we can do a live interactive presentation right from the comfort of your own home or office. Uh, we can conference in a partner or a spouse wherever you'd like and actually do that live interactive presentation in high definition in which our factory trained consultants are actually mic'd in to cover all those questions live for you. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Any last minute questions, Josh? Nope. All right. Well, I want to again thank you for joining us today as we covered the top 10 technology tips uh, here at Litson RV, where we literally are only a mile north of the Winnebago, Itasca, and Winnebago Touring Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa.